like to introduce you to Mike Nolan, who is from Heli Services, part of the management team there. And Mike, you're a, a long time local. You've lived in the area a long time. You work with the community. Um, you've had to think about what might happen if the Alpine Fault breaks in an earthquake. Yeah, definitely. We've probably been thinking about that for, for 10 years or more when uh, it was first came to hand that it, it might be an issue and preparedness is probably the most important thing. In uh, France Joseph we've probably had a civil defence team made up of the, the local contingents for about 12 years or more and um, we meet quite regularly just to keep up to date on uh, what uh, things we can be doing or think about doing and we've actually had a lot of um, floods and road closures in the last three or four years which has actually helped us uh, gain a lot more experience on how to do things and um, learn from them. Mm, exactly because living here in Taipatini Westland you're pretty used to living with the environment and coping with what mother nature has to throw at you so already you're really resilient but you've had to think about things like having supplies and I hear you've got a shipping container that's full of quite a bit of gear. What What's in that? We've purchased some uh, uh, floor mattresses, um, some bed rolls, um, so uh, you know we've got over 150 of those. We've got a large supply of bottled water um, in that container. We've got a lot of signage, so people will know uh, where to come um, if there's an emergency. We'll have a, uh, a, a centre where we'll coordinate things from, uh, where we have our container, and then we have our community hall, which becomes our welfare centre, um, up the other end of town. So there's sort of two locations we've got to look after. And then um, we also have like tarpaulins, uh, we've got head torches, uh, we've got cans of spray paint, um, we've got a huge container full of stationery and forms, uh, which will help us keep track of people and find out who's where. So. Yeah, we're just gradually building up resources uh, over time. We meet quite a lot, at least once a month, just to make sure everyone's up to speed and ready to go should something happen. Mm, and that's fantastic that you've got that community spirit, everybody working together. And you've got a lot of resources here, like your restaurants and things, all your food supply. You've got generators in case the power goes out. You know, we've got a lot of uh, resources here that we can tap into. Like you say, we've got quite a few restaurants and hotels um, that we can utilise. Um, there's also a four square supermarket so we don't have a, a lot of storage of food items but because we've got those other resources that we can tap into we yeah we can go down that road of um, knocking on their doors and, and getting what we need. Um, there's also a lot of um, helicopter and aeroplane operators here as well and although some of that some of the aircraft may be damaged um, hopefully some won't be and we will be able to get people out of here fairly quickly. Um, because I think anywhere in the South Island it, it'll be hard to commandeer others because we'll all just about be in the same boat. Mm. But um, yeah, it'll just be a matter of making sure we help those people get out of here first before we do anything else. Yeah, getting them out on, on flights and then the, I guess the flights can bring in more supplies. That's hey, right. well, thanks Mike. It's really good to hear about some of the plans you've got and I'm sure um, it will help other people to prepare as well. Thanks for your time. No, you're welcome. Thanks very much.